the United States proudly unveils its F-35 stealth jet, a flying marvel valued at $80 million, packed with the most advanced technology in the world. But there's one terrifying problem. It doesn't work. Imagine your warplanes grounded, unable to take off. Your submarines, once silent and invisible beneath the waves, now paralyzed. But this isn't due to a design issue. Instead, it's because China has cut off a single critical element, hidden not in the engines, not in the electronics, but inside the very paint that makes these machines stealthy. And worse, what happens when even your closest allies can't smuggle you the replacement parts? When secret back channels go dark and the world's most powerful military stands helpless? In May 2025, China didn't just block exports. It dismantled the entire shadow network that had quietly kept America's military systems functioning. Rare earth elements smuggled through complex routes, repackaged in South Korea, and disguised as harmless cosmetic products, were identified, exposed, and instantly shut down. The result? A shocking announcement from the Pentagon in just 90 days, less than a single fiscal quarter, entire American weapon systems could begin shutting down. What the world is witnessing isn't a typical trade war. This is something far more dangerous. It's a quiet kill switch, and America just heard it click. On May 9, 2025, China launched a massive coordinated crackdown. This wasn't a simple customs inspection. It was a full-blown multi-agency operation designed to eliminate every remaining loophole in America's rare earth dependency. The Ministry of Commerce, the Customs Authority, and state security joined forces to initiate what they called Operation Thunder. The mission was clear stop disguised exports routed through third party nations like South Korea and the United Kingdom and erase every alternative pathway the US had left. The numbers behind this power move tell a chilling story. According to Bloomberg, China produces 70% of the world's rare earths and controls more than 90% of refining capacity. With 44 million tons sitting in its reserves, China holds nearly half of the planet's entire supply. This isn't just an economic conflict anymore. It's an invisible blockade that's quietly choking one of America's most vulnerable lifelines. This aggressive move didn't happen in a vacuum. Just a month earlier, President Trump had slapped 34% retaliatory tariffs on Chinese goods. China's answer was swift and surgical immediate export controls on seven rare earth categories, all critical to US defense systems. According to the Wall Street Journal, these included elements essential for missile guidance systems, radar-absorbing stealth coatings, and sonar arrays used in nuclear submarines. Beneath the public debate over national security and trade policy, a silent cutoff has triggered the Pentagon's nightmare scenario. At this point, the question is no longer whether China targeted rare earths. The real question is far more alarming. Did China just pull the pin on America's most dangerous supply chain vulnerability? For years, U.S. officials assured the public that America was diversifying its rare earth imports, reducing dependence on China. But when you dig into the actual customs data, a very different picture emerges. Between January and April 2024, China exported 18,000 metric tons of rare earths, nearly matching the total combined exports of all other nations for the entire year. By December 2024, a staggering 97% of rare earth imports into the United States still came directly from China, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. To work around Beijing's tightening grip, U.S. companies increasingly turned to allies. South Korea became a key player in this workaround. But the numbers exposed the game. Imports of Chinese rare earths into South Korea skyrocketed 137% year over year in the first quarter of 2025. Even though South Korea's domestic technology sector grew by less than 5%, based on data from the Korea Institute for Industrial Economics. Meanwhile, South Korea's defense exports to the U.S. exploded by 213% during the same period. The data doesn't lie. It maps out a clear trail. Rare earth elements were moving through unofficial channels, disguised behind complicated trade codes and manipulated invoices. Despite claims of independence, America's supply chain was quietly dependent on gray market flows. But now that China is monitoring every shipment, that secret pipeline may have just collapsed. One of the most shocking discoveries during China's crackdown involved an enormous shipment of rare earth oxides, 320 tons, sent to the United States disguised as cosmetic ingredients with Samsung allegedly involved in the scheme. According to investigative reports leaked to Kaishin Global, these shipments were falsely labeled as recycled materials to evade inspection. 
At the same time, Samsung proudly advertised its S25 smartphone as being built with eco-friendly recycled rare earths. But over 80% of those so-called recycled materials reportedly originated from black market trade routes crossing the Sino-Mongolian border at $38,000 per ton. That disguised shipment was valued at over $12.1 million, enough raw material to supply hundreds of advanced missiles or propulsion systems for fighter jets. While no formal charges were brought, China's Ministry of Commerce issued an unambiguous warning to several South Korean companies in April. Any disguised re-exportation would trigger direct sanctions. The message was not subtle, it was a calculated warning. If beauty products can hide magnets, what else has slipped through the cracks unnoticed? The reality is simple but devastating. America's rare earth strategy wasn't built on independence. It was built on a dangerous illusion that third-party nations could serve as a firewall against China's dominance. But in truth, that firewall was nothing more than a revolving door. As Reuters has confirmed, over 90% of all rare earth elements, even those mined from faraway countries like Australia and Myanmar, end up being refined in Chinese facilities. Even when the raw materials don't come directly from China, the critical processing technology is Chinese. Over the years, the United States has poured billions of dollars into developing its own rare earth processing plants, building major facilities in states like Texas and California. But despite these massive investments, as of the second quarter of 2025, not a single American plant can produce high purity neodymium or dysprosium at commercial levels without depending in some way on Chinese expertise, machinery, or chemical processes. Meanwhile, China has taken a step further to tighten its grip on global rare earth flows. According to the National Defense Industrial Association, Beijing launched a powerful new traceability platform in April. This system requires that every gram of rare earth exported from China be tracked in real time, with detailed logs of where the material is going and who is buying it. This isn't just stronger regulation, it's a digital firewall, backed by state-level surveillance and technology, making it extremely risky for any supplier or middleman to secretly divert shipments or circumvent Chinese controls. At this point, the issue goes beyond supply chains, it has become a matter of survival. Can the West actually meet its rare earth demands without China's processing capabilities? The United Kingdom has tried to speak out, publicly criticizing China's increasingly slow and selective export approval process. But when you take a closer look at the import data, a more puzzling pattern emerges. During the first quarter of 2025, British imports of rare earth magnets from China jumped by 40%, compared to the same period in 2024, as reported by customs records reviewed by the Financial Times. Yet, domestic industrial demand in Britain itself only grew by about 15% during the same time frame. This leaves a significant volume of extra material unaccounted for, raising tough questions about where that surplus ended up. Defense analysts at Chatham House suggest that a large portion of this excess is likely being quietly re-exported to U.S. defense contractors, particularly those involved with the production of America's advanced F-35 fighter jets. Each F-35 requires a staggering 417 kilograms of rare earth materials just to be built. British firms have denied any wrongdoing, insisting they're following all regulations, but Beijing didn't wait for investigations to catch up. On May 14th, China authorized three new exporters, but with strict conditions. Each one must submit highly detailed declarations identifying the end users and providing full buyer profiles. One Chinese official bluntly told the South China Morning Post, this isn't just more paperwork, it's counterintelligence. With Washington rushing to secure enough materials to meet defense production demands, the question remains, how long before London's secret pipeline is exposed to public scrutiny? If China decides to completely cut off rare earth shipments to the United States, the consequences would be severe. According to Pentagon estimates, most U.S. weapons production lines could grind to a halt in just 90 days. Internal Department of Defense simulations, which were reported by Reuters, show just how fragile the system has become. The F-35 stealth jet, already facing serious production bottlenecks, requires 417 kilograms of rare earth elements per aircraft. These include yttrium, which is essential for the radar-absorbing coatings that make the jet stealthy, and gadolinium, 
which allows the jet's engine blades to endure temperatures as high as 1,500 degrees Celsius during sustained supersonic flight. Without these elements, the highly sophisticated $80 million aircraft would essentially become useless, a high-priced shell with no real combat capability. The U.S. Navy is staring down a similar crisis. A single Virginia-class nuclear submarine needs around 4.2 metric tons of rare earth materials to be built. These submarines rely on erbium for their highly sensitive sonar systems and neodymium magnets that power the ultra-quiet propulsion systems necessary for stealth underwater operations. These materials aren't optional. They are absolutely critical for the operation and survival of these vessels. The Wall Street Journal reported that as of May 2025, more than 87% of all rare earth elements used in U.S. defense manufacturing still trace back to Chinese refining, despite years of government efforts to diversify supply chains. If these systems were to fall silent due to shortages, how long could Washington maintain its global military deterrence before silence turns into dangerous vulnerability? Facing China's growing stranglehold, the Trump administration has revived a once shelved but now urgent planned deep sea rare earth mining. This effort targets the rich mineral deposits located on ocean floors as deep as 5,500 meters beneath the surface, essentially an underwater moonshot. The 2024 GAO report painted a sobering picture American seabed mining technology trails China's by approximately 20 years. Even under the most optimistic scenarios projected by the U.S. Geological Survey, this approach would demand a minimum investment of $250 billion and would take at least a decade to fully ramp up assuming that endless legal and environmental challenges don't push the timeline even further. Other potential alternatives have also fallen apart one by one. Ukraine's massive 5 million ton rare earth deposit is now mostly located inside Russian-controlled territory, placing it completely out of reach. Greenland's deposits come with their own problems. Radioactive contamination that would add around $300 per ton in cleanup costs according to a 2025 Bloomberg investigation. Even Australia's promising mineral sands have proven unusable for one simple reason. After being shipped to the United States, they still require China's patented refining technology to be processed into usable material. In April, Trump's 2025 task force quietly acknowledged a painful truth. At this moment, no known alternative source can scale up production without leaning on Chinese technology. So, if every attempt to break free only circles back to Beijing's control, what exactly is Plan B? China's latest move isn't just another export restriction, it's full-scale digital containment. In April 2025, Beijing activated its National Rare Earth Traceability System, forcing every exporter, refiner, and intermediary to log data on every shipment in real time, down to the gram, making unauthorized movements virtually impossible. According to China Daily and Kate Shin, the platform records the mine origin, export classification, end user destination, and corporate disclosure of how materials will be used, essentially criminalizing gray market laundering through third-party countries. It's a full-scale response to operations like South Korea's alleged cosmetic cover exports and the UK's unexplained magnet surplus. Preventing the illegal movement of strategic minerals has become a crucial and urgent task, stated China's Ministry of Commerce on May 9th. The system is designed after blockchain-like trace logs and now covers gallium, germanium, antimony, tungsten, and seven categories of rare earth elements. With over $13 billion worth of unauthorized mineral flows suspected in 2024 alone, according to China's General Administration of Customs, enforcement has moved from physical ports to digital databases. And if there's no hiding place left, can the West still act as if another door remains open? With US-China trade talks scheduled in Switzerland this week, rare earths are no longer simply bargaining tools. They have become the main point of leverage. After President Trump's April tariffs targeting over 180 countries, which included a 34% duty on Chinese imports, Beijing hit back with precise restrictions on rare earths vital for missile systems, jet engines, and next-generation semiconductors. Bloomberg reports that the U.S. sources 68% of its rare earth metals directly from China, with another 24% coming indirectly via partners like South Korea and the U.K., many of whom are now under investigation. In May, Chinese officials made it clear strategic resources cannot be used to support adversarial defense industries. 
According to a leaked memo cited by the Financial Times, the U.S., despite building new processing facilities in Texas and California, is still years away from achieving full production capacity. The defense sector remains exposed to a single point of failure, said Morgan Stanley analyst Derek Lee in his May 12th report. And that point is still China. So if Washington wants a trade deal, how much military strength is it willing to sacrifice to get it? Beijing didn't just turn off the switch, they installed the circuit breaker. Now the real question is, will they pull the master plug on chips? This is no longer about tariffs. It's leverage, disguised as logistics. A few years back, rare earths were simply a small item buried inside obscure mining agreements. Today, they're the spark in a global standoff, and Beijing is holding the match. From submarines that can't submerge to fighter jets grounded without stealth coatings, the future of America's defense manufacturing could depend entirely on a supply chain dominated by its strategic competitor. Traceability systems, trade barriers, digital audits. This isn't just economic warfare, it's industrial containment. But here's what could be coming next. If China now controls the raw materials for modern warfare, what happens when they start targeting the manufacturing equipment itself? Because some insiders believe the next move won't focus on minerals, it'll focus on machines. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and be sure to check out another video that's available right now on your screen.